Edward Kraszyński is one of the most important figures in uh, post-war landscape of avant-garde art in Poland. He started with surrealism and dadaistic paintings and that sense of humor just lasted in his later works. He switches from painting to experiments and his very early works are paintings which are trying to transgress the two-dimensionality of the canvas so you can see the assemblages, the weird objects sticking out the, the painterly surface and, and this is how he uh, arrives towards sculpture. He's a very special artist because he has very precise ideas, very well worked out and, uh, and quite rigorous, but in the same time you can read the humour, you can follow uh, across the career a, a series of themes that, that become quite fun. In late 60s he received this gift of blue scotch tape, a roll of it, Back then it was a very luxury good in Poland. And he s starts to experiment with it, first sticking it uh, on trees and people in his surroundings. And then he ends up using it for each and every of his artwork and exhibitions. So there is a blue tape running across the walls of this show, always at the same height, which is the chest height. So this is how he delineates his territory. The tape became a trademark of Krasinski. And for the next 30 years, he just sticks it everywhere and all over the place. And this is how it's the easiest to spot Krasinski's works among other works, really. What is important when we consider Krasinski works is not to look at them individually, but as groups. So when he worked, you can claim that he always considered his exhibitions as total scenarios. The show is staged in a su succession of rooms that essentially are nearly like theatrical scenes that develop one after the other. Uh, and there's always um, different kind of things that emerge and, and re-emerge. For example, the work behind me has a lot of pictures of works that, that people would have seen in previous rooms. Uh, so it really is like something between a musical composition and a theatrical uh, kind of setting in which uh, the artist really explores humor, uh, but also architecture and perception of space uh, uh, questions uh, or, or forces people to question what an, an art object is and how an art object comes to life uh, across time, for example, using photography and, and showing uh, uh, works that he had done previously, but like using photography, painting over it and then turning that into an object that then has a, has a second life uh, later on again as a photographic image. One of the rooms in our show is devoted to his 1970 participation in Tokyo Biennale and that was one of the most important shows at that time focusing on experimental tendencies in sculpture and art. There is an anecdote behind it. Basically the works were selected for the show and they were shipped from Warsaw but before the exhibition opened the organizers already knew that they are not going to reach the place on time. And they informed the artist and his very quick decision was to sort it out, to find a solution in a way that he sent a telegram to the organizers of Tokyo Biennale, repeating 5,000 times word blue. And he asked them to exhibit this roll of tape on an oversized plinth he prepared for his sculptures. And that's a very strong conceptual gesture. So for Krasinski, that trigger something in his art, his practice changes slightly afterwards, becomes more conceptual, although I would argue that it was never fully conceptual art. Then the works arrived to Tokyo and they were exhibited and they were very much his sculptures. I don't think it marks a rupture in his career. I think it's a very much of a continuation, but I think that the story with the telegram also opened the door for the blue line, really because the blue line is the most conceptual gesture of the artist. There's also something very Duchampian about it, like something very ready-made, industrially made. He's an artist who plays tricks on our perception constantly and who works in this very immersive way that you become part of the installation as soon as you enter it, really. So I think it's, a, it's just a great sensual experience to enter his words. All of this uh, transition between an idea uh, coming into real space, the idea of illusion and, and, uh, and the idea of, of perspectival space that, that he was quite keen on creating, are all uh, sort of uh, instruments, sort of tools that he uses to create some sort of stage for the spectators to, to have to figure out. Uh, so 
when uh, when you come and see the show, I think that the impression that you have is that this is a big theatre stage, but the, the the main actor, the main protagonist, it's it's actually you.